to thank everyone for joining me in this morning's session, uh, Superior Market Timing with a Little Common Sense. And that's something, so, something I teach at Trends and Futures. It's called Common Sense Trading. Now, I have to say I'm a futures trader. Uh, I was on the floor of the Board of Trade for six and a half years in the 1980s. Um, learned all about the markets there. Uh, fell in love with the markets probably within the first few days of working as a runner. It wasn't the easiest job in the world, but boy, was that a great education. Um, I'm sure many of you are day traders. I'm not sure if you're not, you know what, how many of you trade futures out there, or how many of you trade stocks, but what I'm going to be looking at today will cover just about everything. Uh, I do look at futures and forex. We do have ETFs that are commodity related at trends and futures, um, but we don't do individual stocks. I'm, I'm not a stock trader. I do invest in stocks as an investment, you know, with my investment portfolio, um, but I'm a futures trader <laughs> born and bred on the floor of the Board of Trade. But what I want to get started with today is a question I have for everybody, um, and uh, it's a question I just want you to think about. You don't have to answer this immediately, but it's something I wish everyone gets to in their trading career. Um, the question that I want to get started with here um, is really simple. Are you at peace with the outcome prior to every trade you enter, positive or negative? And that's a place I wish all traders get to in their career as traders, that whenever you get into a trade, no matter what you're trading, again, stocks, futures, ETFs, Forex, I hope you all are at peace with every outcome prior to every trade you enter, again, positive or negative. <laughs> okay, Pete, that's a great line. Uh, he's at peace with his life and afterlife. That's a good thing. People, I'm talking, you know, talking trading here, and it's not easy to get to this place because a lot of people use emotions. We talk about fear and greed, which I don't think are bad things. Okay, people sit there and say you have to trade without fear and greed. That's just not true. I don't put my hand on something hot out of fear I'm going to burn myself. So at this point, you want to make sure that you understand that greed and fear is good. It's just not getting too overly greedy or overly, or overly fearful in the markets. Now, another question I'm going to ask is basically simple. How many of you watching this have been taught the concept that you need an arsenal of trading strategies to trade all of the numerous market conditions that market could be in? If you ever notice, these teaching this always seem to have their hand in your pocket taking money to sell you those strategies. And besides, exactly how many market conditions are there? What I'm asking is basically how many market conditions are there that a market could be in at any given time? And I'm getting some questions here about trading right now. Um, and if you can, just hold off. I know we're going to have a lot of time to you know, answer questions after, you know, for a few minutes after I'm done with the presentation. I'm going to try to get through this as quickly as I can. Um, but there's, there's a number of market conditions we're going to discuss, and there's, this is the only number that's out there. I've challenged thousands of traders to add a ninth for a completely one-year free service to my service. One-year free to Trends and Futures if you can add a, a number to what I'm about to show you. Okay? This is market conditions. There's eight. There are eight market conditions a market could be in at any given time. You add a ninth to this, that's legitimate, you'll get a free year to Trends and Futures. And like I said, I've done a lot of webinars with thousands of people on these webinars and asked the same question, and I have yet to get a ninth. So what are these eight market conditions? These are what I call eight common sense market conditions. And I want to just excuse myself, just let you know, I am fighting what is called a Chicago cold. It's something you get when the temperatures go from 60 to 30 to 70 to 20 day after day. And that's something we've been experiencing here in the Chicagoland area. <clears throat> Very unusual weather for the end of February. I would rather actually have personally um, cold weather throughout the month of February. I never get sick when that happens, but when we have these crazy temperatures, this is when I get my colds. So if you hear me sniffle or cough, I apologize. 
Let's see if we can get through this without much difficulty. So here again, market conditions. And of course, I go through this at Trends and Futures every day on how to trade each condition. But the conditions basically, you've got a weak trend weakening. You've got a weak trend strengthening. And we teach people how to define these very quickly every day. Price action in these two conditions, the market's range bound. When you start seeing this taking place, you start looking for the ranges that are developing. Top of the range, bottom of the range. Again, this is something I cover at Trends and Futures every day on all the markets. 47 futures markets, 20 Forex pairs, and 23 ETFs. So here, here's what you want to catch. Even intraday, and I'm going to show you things intraday on a five-minute chart on what I do. Actually, one of my key tools that I use. It's not the only tool I use, but it's a key tool I use. We have a strong uptrend starting. Price action is rising, and you're watching for a break of a range top. You have a strong downtrend starting. Price action is dropping. You're watching for a break of a range bottom. Again, intraday, daily, weekly, whatever chart you're looking at. When you have a weak trend weakening, there is no trend. When you have a weak trend strengthening, there is no trend. Weak trends are no trends. Strong uptrend strengthening, market's rising. Strong uptrend weakening. The mark, what's happening here is the trend is, it doesn't mean that the trend's not still strong. It's just weakening. And this is where you start watching for choppy price action. And you also start watching for a potential range to be developing. Many times in a strong uptrending market for a length of time, even on an intraday chart, many times the market kind of lays down into a range for a while. I've seen that on daily charts, and I've seen that on intraday charts. Just so you know, you're talking to somebody who does both. I day trade the markets. I also position trade. I have two separate accounts, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. But when you have a strong trend you know, weakening, a strong uptrend weakening, you do look for that. You know, the price action is dropping, and you're watching for you know, choppy price action. Strong downtrend strengthening. Price action, of course, is dropping, and you're into a nice trade, and you're just basically managing open trade equity there. And then you have a strong downtrend weakening. And it's the same thing. Price action is rising, and you're watching for choppy price action. These are the only eight conditions a market can be in at any given time. You're not going to see markets. Yes, markets move sideways or up and down. Now, those are just the only three ways they can move. But I'm talking market condition. And why is it important for you to know market condition? Again, intraday, daily, doesn't matter. The joke here, and it's something I've talked about, is something I learned when I started sailing years ago, is the fact of the matter is you really need to know wind, you know, wind direction, you know, which, which, which direction is the wind coming, and wind speed. And there's tools that we use in sailing to do that, the most advanced tool I've ever found, well, actually the first tool for, for that was sticking your finger in your mouth and putting your finger in the air to see where the wind was coming from. That was the first probably weather vane, I guess you can say. But that's something you need to know why. Just like for trading, you want to know market condition, you want to know what. Trend direction, trend speed, or trend strength. That's how you know how to adjust your sales or adjust what you're doing in your trading for the most efficient and best way to make money in the markets. So what are we talking about today? Well, first, this is a quote from a book written in 1978. Directional movement is the most fascinating concept I have studied. Defining it is a little like chasing a rainbow. You can see it, you know it's there, but the closer you get, the more elusive it becomes. I have probably spent more time studying directional movement than any other concept. Certainly one of the most satisfying achievements was the day I was actually able to reduce this concept to an absolute mathematical equation. He says, certainly it was one of my most satisfying achievements. Think about the implications of being able to rate the directional movement of all commodities or stocks. This was written by J. Wells Wilder. As far as I'm concerned, he was one of the best at what he did, and I do believe to this day, managing Futures Learning Center for almost 10 years for Futures Magazine Group, he was the most copied person 
in the industry. I'm talking about people copied almost everything he has done, trying to recreate different mouse traps. But he's the original who created, as far as I'm concerned, some of the best trading tools in the industry that, again, many people have tried to copy, but no one has come close to what he's done for traders. Now, we talked about commodities and stocks back in 78. He didn't use the word futures because you know, it was all commodities and stocks back then. We didn't have the E-mini S&P. We didn't have certain things that we could trade back then. But he created things like average true range, RSI, and something else we're going to look at today, which is exactly what he's talking about in this quote from his book. And I actually have a PDF of this book on the site at Trends and Futures, and it's free. It's an old book, 1978. So say hello to the key tool that makes up my common sense trading strategy. This is one of the key tools that makes up common sense trading. I use other things. If someone said to me tomorrow, I know I can use one indicator and that's all I could use and I can't use anything else, no moving averages, nothing. I, can, I can't use anything other than one indicator. What would I use? I would use ADX. That's it. But that doesn't happen. So I could actually add things to ADX that makes ADX a lot easier to use and more powerful, which I do do, and you'll learn a lot. People learn all about that at Trends and Futures. But ADX is a key indicator. Why is that? The first thing that Wells Wilder did is ADX measures strength of trend. That's it. That's the only reason it's there in existence. It tells you if you know those what we just talked about. It talks about you know where's the trend? Is it a weak trending market weakening? Is it a weak trending market strengthening? All about the trend. ADX is all about trend strength. What happens when ADX numbers are at 40 moving to 60? It's a very strong trending market. What he also adds to this because ADX does something interesting here. It measures strength of trend, but it doesn't do one thing. It doesn't tell you what direction the trend is. Uh, so what does he do? Wells Wilder creates a complete trading system here by adding directional movement index plus and minus. DI plus, as far as I'm concerned, measures strength of buyers. Remember that wind we talked about? DI minus measures strength of sellers. Who's in control at that given time? Whether, again, you're looking at an intraday chart I use a five-minute chart or a daily chart. I mean, I actually can use this on a weekly chart also. So here, how does this actually work? Well, it's really simple. Again, I use the word simple here. Successful trading is not what I would call easy, but it doesn't have to be complicated. I keep things in the simplest terms when I'm trading. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a moment. But rules of ADX, again, measuring trend strength, not market direction. When you see ADX numbers at a value of 0 to 20, there's no trend. It's a weak trending market. 20 to 25, I like to call a transition period. And this is something I got from his book, Wells Wilder's book from 1978. 25 to 40, strong trend. We start seeing strength of trend developing as ADX numbers climb above 25. Again, not knowing anything about trend direction. Is it a strong uptrend or a strong downtrend? We don't know that yet. 40 to 60 is a very strong trend. And keep in mind, when you're looking at markets that are overbought or oversold, what's going to happen to them in a strong trending market? Hmm, think about that. Extreme is over 60, and I cover that again every day in all the markets. And I have tools at the site at Trends and Futures that are designed to show you this very quickly, not on charts, but on spreadsheets. You can very quickly look at what I call the common sense trading daily advantage. On 47 futures markets, in 10 minutes, and looking at this spreadsheet, you will be able to tell me trend strength in all 47 markets, literally, in 10 minutes. Not even 10 minutes. You can just look down the line and see the numbers. And you can see as they move intraday, are they moving up, are they moving down? So here's the rules of ADX. Now what about the rules of directional movement index? That other indicator that Wells Wilder added to ADX. 
Well, DI plus is over DI minus and DI differential is rising. DI differential is the difference between DI plus and DI minus. So we call that DI differential. That's a number that we use at Trends and Futures. The number goes up. Buyers are taking control when DI plus is over DI minus and that number is going up. Buyers are taking control. Again, intraday, daily, it doesn't matter. DI minus is over DI plus and DI differential is rising. Sellers are basically taking control. Again, you need to see that DI differential moving. Now, what happens when DI differential is close to zero? We might be seeing something taking place. That's why I show DI differential turning yellow on that spreadsheet I just talked about when it's under five. That's when you open up the chart and look for a possible opportunity coming either long or short the market. And that's more for day trading. Excuse me. That's more for position trading, not day trading. I'll show you that in a moment also. We're going to go over a bunch of charts in a moment. Even a stock chart. <laughs> but again, I don't trade stocks. So when you're putting it all together, what happens? Well, just to give you an example, you got a cross up over 25. And ADX numbers are rising. You've got DI plus over DI minus and DI differentials rising. You're looking for that long position that hopefully you might be in already. You've got a cross up over 25 and it's rising. ADX numbers are showing a strengthening trend, but DI minus is over DI plus and DI plus is rising. And DI, you know, DI differentials rising, excuse me. You're, you're either short the market already because you're maybe swing trading and you caught the price action up from the bottom of a range. And you're short the market. You get a breakout of that range. You see this taking place. It's a good breakout. Hey, ADX numbers have the ability to help you knowing if you're in a situation where there's a good breakout or not a good breakout. So you have ADX numbers above 40 and they're dropping. What's happening? DI plus is over DI minus and DI differential is dropping. You're long the market now. I'm not saying you're just going ready to exit the trade. What you're doing is you're making sure your stocks are adjusted or your sales are adjusted properly. To make sure you take out as much money and put in your pocket from the open trade equity you're managing. And we're going to talk about that in a moment regarding stops. <laughs> I got a very interesting stop with the way I play stops. It's going to be a question I'll be asking many of you. So putting it all together, you can see what's happening here. So again, looking back, the market conditions. What I just showed you, this is how you define these market conditions, and it's done quickly. You're not looking to spend 10 minutes trying to figure out a market condition. You're looking to do this in a split second, especially if you're day trading. And I do, I mean, I'm going to show you ADX numbers and some intraday charts, not with the complete common sense trading setup. This is just ADX. So here, one of the favorite markets I trade, I day trade this market, I position trade this market. I had fun day trading this market yesterday. We'll show you that in a moment. But here's an intraday chart. Excuse me, this is a daily chart. This is a daily candlestick chart um, for April 2017, crude oil. And crude oil, it's going to lose a lot. What's happening in crude today? Where's crude heading? Last year, if you go to TrendsInFutures.com, last year in January 2015, I said crude oil prices, when they were trading around 35, 38, I said crude oil prices would hit $50 a barrel that year. And it's just a, I don't like making predictions because, you know, people make these predictions all the time about the stock market crashing, the doom and gloomers, and it seems to never happen. It does happen sooner or later down the road, you know, five years later, three years later. But they'll come and say, oh, look, I told you so, but you've been telling me this for the past three or four years, and if I've been listening to you, I wouldn't be doing so well in the market. And here's a situation I want you to all understand. When you're trading, do not, and this is something I even have problems with, do not trade what you think. Only trade what you see. Too many of us get caught up in, you know, the market, you think the market's going to do something. Only trade what you see. It's not easy. But we're looking at a crude oil chart 
with nothing on it. This is just price action. How do you know how do you catch these trades? How do you how do you catch these moves? How do you know the market's not going to do something like we see back in here? Back in June, July. Now here's a situation here with crude oil. It's a futures contract. More people are going to be trading, you know, the current month, the lead months. July wasn't the lead month back in June 2016. However, is there a tool you can use? There certainly is. Now again, I don't just look at ADX numbers on a daily or intraday chart or a weekly chart. I have other things that I apply to ADX that makes it a much stronger tool to use. And that's all about common sense trading. That's what the whole common sense trading strategy is all about. But ADX is a key tool here. So you can clearly see we call these <laughs> red CSTs and green CSTs at trends and futures. Yeah, you can say, oh, I, moved the, I missed this move down. Well, you can see the price action here would be very hard to trade in. It was a weak trending market. Why did I say that? ADX numbers are below 20 here. This black line is 20. I highlight that at trends and futures. What's happening here? What am I looking for? 49, the market had a problem. This particular contract had a problem at 49 back in here. A red CST is not telling you just to jump into the market very quickly. Oh, I'll just jump into the market short now. No. You don't do that. What you're looking to do is you start looking for the price action at levels. And this is something I talk about at Trends and Futures. I tell people, red CST, looking for a break below this, looking for a break below that. Here, break below 49. If there's a problem with anybody taking a trade from below 49 and writing it down to here, I want to hear about it. That's over $5,000. That's on one contract. So here you get this trade in, you're managing open trade equity. Again, we'll talk more about how I get out of trades in a moment. But keep in mind, you're managing this trade, you're going to be getting out of this trade, pocketing money, which is something I always talk about <laughs> at Trends and Futures, and you wait to get back in. Now you've got a green CST here, but what's happening? Something is weakening. Remember we talked about market condition. we got a strong trending market down weakening and look at the plus and di minus we got a second green cst here you're like wait what's going on now we see something else taking place di plus crosses up over di minus and you catch it right up okay you know i'm not going to lose sleep over missing this move besides i was managing open trade equity from a short you catch another move up is that a bad thing that's uh harry it's common sense trading CST stands for common sense trading. It's my strategy, and it's the only strategy I use to trade the markets. The strategy is something I use. I will adjust my sales, what I talked about earlier, and that's what I do. I adjust my sales. That's how common sense trading works. I'm not looking to jump ship and go to another sailboat like many people do all the time. Oh, we'll go from this strategy to that strategy to this strategy. People. When I was at Futures Learning Center, I did this with surveys. People use a strategy for three to six months and they go on to the next one. Oh, because that one didn't work. Give it some time. Learn the strategy, master the strategy, and you'll see. This is why it's the only strategy I use for trading. It's scalable, and it's something that is able to uh, be adjusted very easily, just like you adjust sails on a sailboat. So here again, you catch a nice move up. Here, it's a questionable move, and you may stay out of this trade. But this is, again, this is for not day trading. This is for holding positions long term. I'm not quite sure how many people do that here. I'm a position trader, and I'm also a day trader. Again, I do both. I don't. The difference between my position trading and um, day trading is I will position trade most markets. I will get into just about anything that looks good on a chart. But I don't day trade that many markets. I day trade maybe uh, maybe three to five I'll be looking at on any given day. And it's the same markets. E-mini S&P, crude oil, gold, soybeans, and coffee are interchangeable. I do look at two Forex pairs. One I'll show you, the U.S. dollar yen. I love that currency pair. Now, at this time... You could see that you know the trades that took place. You know, in December, you got the trades in October. We hear about fundamentals. I do talk fundamentals at Trends and Futures. 
I would never consider ignoring fundamentals. OPEC's meeting, oh, they're cutting production. The market comes up a bit, but wait, the U.S., <laughs> we're adding production. Our rig counts go up every week. I, I show that every Friday with the Baker Hughes rig count number. Those numbers go up, we're going to be pumping. Now get this, we're also exporting oil now. Last couple of weeks, we're exporting over a million barrels a day, and that's going up. Now, if we're increasing our exports of oil, and OPEC is de decreasing their exports of oil, what's going to happen here? Is there a one and a half million barrel drop daily going to be offset by what we're doing here in the U.S.? And believe me when I tell you this, especially the Saudi Arabian folks, they're watching the U.S. very carefully, and not just because Trump. <laughs> but here today, what is happening in crude oil? Where is crude oil heading in the long run? Many people are just saying $60 a barrel. We could see that be a little higher. That could happen, especially if ExxonMobil wants that to happen. And that's something I talk about in a different book, which I will send you later today. But here... What's happening today is the market's in a range. Yes, crude oil can trade in a range like any other market. It's been in a very tight range. I've been waiting for a close. Actually, back in March, I was waiting for a close above 55. Now here, I'm looking for a close above 56. This is April, not March. But we still see this range. How, in, how do you trade a range-bound market? If you're a longer-term trader, it's not easy. It's not easy at all. That's why I day trade crude oil. Crude oil has enough moves in it in a day. And, you know, yesterday, yesterday was an interesting move. On this daily chart, we see what? A doji candle. But could you have made money in this chart daily? Of course you could have. I'll show you that in a moment. I have a question here I do want to address. No, ADX numbers is not the only indicator I use for day trading. I have certain moving averages I add to the chart and another indicator that I do apply. Actually, I also use volume and open interest. Volume is key to also to using what I do. I use, I look at volume and I would, I, don't, I would never ignore volume. Also, for longer term trades, I use something else called the Commitment of Traders Report. And again, I, I'll have an offer for you at the end of the day. I'll send you a book on how to use that. If you trade Forex and you're not looking at big money, you're doing yourself a disservice. Also, the term scalping, Dave, who scalps today? Who is scalping between bids and offers today? Those are the market makers back on the floor when I was on the floor. They would basically, they're selling the offer, buying the bid, selling the offer, buying the bid, selling the offer, buying the bid all day long. I want to know how many people think you could be a successful scalper today in the environment we're living in electronically. Back when we knew we knew the market makers, on the floor you knew who they were. You saw them, you saw their jacket, you knew who they represented it. Also, on the floor, you knew the big traders. How did you know the big traders? You saw their jackets, you knew who they worked for. When you sat in the T-bond pit and some big bank came in, like Northern Trust, and started doing what they were doing, you knew who was doing it. I saw them. So here, again, what you need to understand today is while we have you know, services that can show us order flow and all that stuff, you're not really seeing who's making the trades. However, I'll show you, I'll talk about something towards the end of the webinar about how you can check that out. I don't, uh, Dave, I don't really agree with that. I don't make that many trades a day. I'm not looking to make, how many trades a day do you make, Dave? Just curious. If you're doing that, I make a few trades a day. That's all I make. I'm not looking to scalp anything. Dealing with HFT today and the big banks, it's not. There's guys I know that Tom Baldwin, a big bond trader, he can't even do that on a computer today. He was one of the biggest scalpers in the industry. And that's the bond pit, not any other market. Um, I have another question here. Uh, Mike, I, I'll trade anything, again, that looks good on a chart. Most of the markets I trade, I'll trade grains, I'll trade meats, I'll trade softs, more of a position trade. Coffee, many times I'll have on a chart looking at it from a day trader's perspective. Beans, I'll look to day trade. Um, crude oil, gold, and the mini S&P. I will position trade the Dow, however. It's kind of an interesting market to position trade. 
But again, the market's a weak trading market now. The market's trading in a range. I'm looking for something to happen here. I'll tell you something right now. Managed Money has the largest net long position in the history of the world. What did I just say? That happens comes from the COT. Managed Money has the largest net long position ever. That's actually extremely bullish, and it's not moving the market right now. Dave, that's good. When you go real, when you, when you get away from the SIM program, send me an email and let me know how you're doing. Just curious. I mean, that'd be great if you're doing that for real. I hope you do that every day for the rest of your life, trading. But here, I'm looking at a crude oil five-minute chart. There are two trades I took yesterday, and you're looking at them. However... How did I know about these? What was I looking for? Now, I do go back and look what happened overnight. I line out the information I see from over. Overnight, you're not going to see a lot of volume necessarily in many markets. You'll see volume when many times the European market opens, 1, 1 a.m. But overall, yesterday, I come in. Actually, I opened my computers up at around 5.45 a.m., 5 to 6 a.m. in the morning. Go back. I look. I see what, how, what the price action did overnight. Now, what do I do here? And again, this is crude oil's five-minute chart from yesterday. And again, there's not just ADX on this chart. I do use a couple moving averages to kind of confirm what I'm looking to do. Um, I have other things on this chart that I use with, that makes up common sense. But again, what am I looking here? Again, I don't really care what the market's doing outside of the intraday chart. And, you know, it could be trending up. If it's a strong trending market up, I might look just trend, you know, day trade that trend up. But here... What's happening? We got something taking place. Here it was nice to see that um, ADX numbers actually came up over 20 here. And now I'm looking for a short below 53.90. So you catch a nice move up, or I should say move down here, and then you start seeing some weakness develop. What's weakening? Something is weakening here. This is that green line telling you it's weakening or strengthening. It doesn't tell you market direction, like I said. And what happens? You get a bounce. Off of 53.40, you get stopped out. I got stopped out of the trade. I'm waiting to get back in. I really thought about taking a short out here, but I missed this five-minute bar, and then I waited to see what was taking place. We had a weakening trending market. Now, after 11 o'clock a.m. Central Time, these are all Central Time times you're looking at, a bounce off of 53 and a quarter. And we saw what happened back here at 53 and a quarter. Now we got DI plus up over DI minus, and now only that, but it's breaking over 20 here. We see some strength of trend developing to a possible move up. Now we see what happened here at 53.35. I'm looking to go long out here. I got filled here at 53.37. Got stopped out on this third candle down at 53.77. Not a huge trade, but a <laughs> good enough trade for me for an hour's worth of work. And then I was done, done for the day with crude oil. And now I'm still waiting again for the longer term look at crude. I am looking for the price action to come up. But, you know, when I'm day trading, I'm not really focused on that. I'm more focused on what I see on the chart. Uh, EST, the question mark, Chris, I don't, your EST question mark. is. This is central time. The times in the bottom on these charts are central time. And what about gold? <laughs> Gold's an, if you ever want to know how to trade gold, if you do take a trial of the Trends and Futures, you have a 30-day trial I'll be offering you for free, no credit card needed. You'll have the access to a video I did a few years ago called Gold Fever. And the reason I called it Gold Fever it was a movie that Clint Eastwood was in. Where he, it's the first movie he actually ever sang in. Now, Clint Eastwood happens to be one of my favorite actors. My favorite movie, if you all need to know, is the outlaw Josie Wales? I could look at that. I could watch that movie every day for the rest of my life and be happy. 
I love westerns. I love the old west. So that's why <laughs> I like west. I like all the old 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 westerns. Are just what I, I like old westerns. I'm an old soul, I guess. That's what my wife tells me. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a civil war. There, <laughs> I knew this was going to get response. There was a civil war tilt um, that was really nice in uh, in the outlaw Josie Wales. And there were some soft moments in that movie, too, guys. <laughs> you know, he could be soft at times. My favorite part of that movie is when he talks to that uh, um, uh, two bears or ten, no, ten bears, the Indian. I think everybody on the planet should watch that scene every day. Really get understanding of how we start understanding how we live together peacefully. Okay, now Joseph's asking a good question. Real quick, ADX numbers that I use, first of all, it's a modified ADX. Now, what that, what that means that trends in futures is it's, it's modified. The modified ADX basically uses exponential moving averages instead of Wells Wilder's moving averages. It's a little bit more sensitive to the more recent price action. <laughs> yeah, some people saw that. I can't believe you guys saw that scene with tenders. That's amazing. But here again, Gold, you see some price action coming down here. Now, this is the election, guys. If you There's two nights this year that my wife doesn't like me staying up at night trading. There's two nights I did stay up, and I left one of my kids stay up with me because he was helping me, believe it or not. I stayed up for Brexit, and he was actually working with one of my computers, basically updating the BBC information. The BBC had a great tool during Brexit. It was kind of like the voting, you know, showing the votes coming in, and it was like, he, I actually had him hit that button like every minute, every two minutes, and it was updating. And as you saw Brexit winning, you saw what happened to the market. As you saw Brexit losing, I guess I should say. And same thing with the election. That's the other night I stayed up all night. <laughs> but two nights I stayed up this year, Brexit and during the election. <clears throat> and I didn't stay up last night during the speech. I'm fighting this cold, remember? But here, something interesting here, and I want you to if you see if you can remember this. What happened in gold before the election? Wait, we had a rally in gold, didn't we? Wait, what's going on in gold? What caused this? How many people can remember what caused this? I'll give you a few minutes to figure this out. What caused this? And then what caused the drop in gold? And then, of course, you know what happened during the election. <laughs> That's a great candle. But <laughs> um, here, even... The CRB Trend Trader is a product that gives out specific buy and sell recommendations at Trends and Futures. It's been around since the 60s. It's probably the first electronic trading system ever developed by the Commodity Research Bureau. The CRB Trend Trader actually recommended a short on the close November 10th. This is November 9th. I remember this trade very well. But here again, it was after the election, what's taking place? Well, you know what happened. And gold starts dropping. But why did this drop take place? Do you know what happened back here? This is when, was it Comey, the FBI director? This is when Comey decided to reopen a case against Hillary Clinton. And what happened to the markets? You know what happened to the markets back then. The stock market dropped. Market comes up. I know that happened. You know that happened. The technicals. Nothing new that this was taking place. Technicals never would have understood what was happening, but we and I did. Now, did I know he was going to say something on Friday? He didn't call me and tell me he was going to make that announcement when he made the announcement. He also didn't call me and tell me that weekend, on a weekend, he came out and said, they're closing the case again. They didn't find anything for that week. That's, that just was kind of interesting. I wish these people would call me first. It would be nice. But here again, the market comes down. That Monday, the market gapped down. You see what takes place. And then the election took place. And then again, that recommendation was made. But you see the moves up. The move, now here, a simple situation of what I did in gold, talking to Trends and Futures customers, telling them to look for the long above 1160. We got long at 1162 here. And again, you're adjusting your stops accordingly. You have to know what you're taking out of the trade, how much money you're putting in your pocket. So here, this is a gold daily chart with ADX. 
again, this is the day, November 10th. We not only had a red CST, but we had CRB Trencher recommending a short. With that, you just you just do whatever you got to do to get short gold. And you catch a really nice move down. And I'm going to tell you something about trades like this. I know day trading brings a little bit of excitement. It's a little bit exciting to day trade. Position trading markets and managing open trade equity is like watching paint dry. It's boring. You could say, oh, wait, I, I'm glad I'm making money. Yeah, but it's boring to come home at night if you work full time and all you're doing is adjusting your stop, adding open trade equity to your pocket. It's boring. This is not a, exciting. Making money is not exciting in the markets. Making money is making money. This is a job. This is a business. And if you're looking for excitement in trading, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, and if, you, if that's why you're trading, day trading the markets for the excitement, you're better off going to Vegas. You'll have more fun losing your money. I'm telling you, when you're making money trading, it could be very boring. And I have to say, the most boring trades are the biggest money-making trades. So here you can see, we had a red CST out here. Again, you saw a bounce off of 1320. You're looking for that maybe possible short below 1320 off of this red CST. What's happening again? ADX, DI minus is coming over DI plus, and ADX number start coming up over 20, rising into that 2025 area. You've got strength to trend developing. Even before this break below 1320. It's a short-term trade. Yes. Profitable trade? Yes. And you see the price action in here, weakening trending market, and then you know what happened here. Comey makes the announcement. It's a weak trending market. I'm not really getting ready to trade anything right before the election, even though everyone said Hillary was going to win. I'm not betting on that, especially after what happened with Brexit. But here, you get the election done. Here's your short. If you wanted to wait for the break below 1260, you're more than welcome if you're really conservative. Green CST out here, you're looking to get out of this trade if you're um, short. And now we're looking for a possible move. And I mentioned this, 1160 is the number I was watching. The 1162 number looked good to me. That's where I got along the market. Now, again, you're getting out of this trade, pocketing money, waiting to get back in. At this time, What's happening in gold? Well, gold, <laughs> the gold bulls didn't like what Trump said yesterday. Actually, the U.S. dollar is coming up today pretty high. But you look at see what happened at 1260. I mentioned this early in the year. After 1260, we're going to see 1300. We've got a $40 move from 12 to 1240 before the break. We've got a $40 move between 1220, a little break here at 1240, but then a push up to 1260. Next break over 1260, that $40 step. Is going to be 1300. Is this going to happen? I think it's going to happen. Am I going to trade this? No. I don't trade what I think. I trade what I see. Uh, KW CST, the common sense trading, uh, the vertical lines you actually see based on what you take off of the Common Sense Trading Daily Advantage. It's a spreadsheet. You'll actually see DI plus and DI minus right next to each other with a DI differential number. If it's below 5, it turns yellow. So it's kind of like a warning sign for you to open up the chart and look for what's taking place. I cover this on the site every day. I'll tell you when I see this taking place. Break below 1260, but down here again, CRV Trend Trader did recommend a short here. There's two parts of trends and futures. There's a CRV Trend Trader, which is a long-term trend following system that actually gives out specific trade recommendations, and I manage that trade for everybody. Also, I give out my own common sense trading signals, and those are things that people take advantage of more because they're more. It's, it's how you're adjusting your sales. It's what you're going to look at to get in and out of the market. Now here's your daily chart of gold. Not an exciting day. Uh, the little drop that took place after noon, that was okay. But not a huge day in the market yesterday. 
and we see what's taking place. You have a, a, a green CST out here. Again, not a huge move up. You know, gold, a dollar move in gold is how much in your pockets? $100. Crude oil, a dollar move up is 1000 bucks. You could take 50 cents out of crude every day. That's 500 bucks a day. Now, I don't just trade one contract, but I'm just talking to people now about just trading one contract. If you trade three, four contracts of crude oil and you make 50 cents a day, you can see the kind of money you can make every day. And it's not going to help. It's, I'm, I don't break sweats when I'm trading. But here again, you got a red CST. What are you looking for? You saw a test here of 1256. You're looking for that shorting opportunity on this candle right here. On a break below 1256. You can catch a trade like this. You can make some money. Again, I'm looking to make money every day in a few markets, not just one market. So you can clearly see a strong trending market down. ADX numbers got up to 60 out here, but then started weakening. Weakening trending market, what did I say? You look for a possible range developing. Range bottom here could be 1250. Now wait, what about the yen? I happen to think the yen, by far, was the biggest money-making currency since 2000, end of 2012. Why do I say that? If you recall, at the end of 2012, Abe, who was running for president of Japan, the leader of Japan, in his, in, in his, you know, what he was talking about when he was running for, you know, the election, in his platform, he said something that was interesting. I'm sure most people just didn't pay attention, or if they did, they would have shorted the, shorted the yen. He said he was going to drop the yen. If you look what happened on a weekly chart with big money, and this was amazing with the yen. Big money after he won the election became so bearish. The yen, the, the yen dropped like a rock, and the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen took off, just like we saw after the election. <laughs> but here, back in here, beginning in late September, early October, we saw a nice move up in the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. People say, "Oh, you can't trend trade forex." Really, I believe currencies trend more than any other markets, and not that they trend more, meaning that. They might trend 30% at a time, 35% at a time. Other markets don't trend as much. So that's why you got to be aware of you know, If you're swing trading, you're swing trading. If you're you know, longer term position trading, again, this is what you want to do with your trading. And I know, I know, everyone wants to be a day trader today, but not everyone can be a day trader if you have a full time job. But you want to take advantage of this type of market action. And you're taking out a lot of money out of this trade. Green CST here again before the election. What dropped? What dropped the U.S. dollar here? Again, this, this is the dropping U.S. dollar against the yen. What was causing this? It's the same thing. History doesn't. You know, <laughs> it's, it didn't matter. Comey came out. The U.S. dollar got hit. And Comey came out, and the U.S. dollar came up. Right into the election. Again, the election was kind of crazy, like Brexit. Next day. Trend traders are going to actually, actually, even trend trader look to go long. You catch a nice move up. You adjust your stops. You're waiting to get back in. This is a daily chart of the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. Again, very boring trade. Sorry. Managing pips, managing open trade equity cash, it doesn't matter. It's still boring. But the most important thing for everybody at Trends and Futures and all traders I talk about, is about pocketing money. How much you plan on putting in your pocket when you're trading. Harry, basically what I do when I look at these is basically I'm looking at where's ADX numbers going? Are they heading south? Are they heading north? And I look at price action is very important. You want to look at price action. You know, back here before what Comey said, the market tested 105. Would the market have continued rising? Here's a question. Would the market here have continued rising if Comey didn't say anything? Maybe, but he, that's not the case. He said something, it jarred the market, and you see the price action after that. So to move on, Looking at the daily chart, again, this is the daily chart yesterday of the U.S. dollar Japanese yen. 
You had a long-term trade at 1 p.m. Again, Forex doesn't close. At Trends and Futures, we do give a snapshot of a five of a five o'clock close. It's a New York time close, but that's what we do. And then we have an open at the next minute, so we don't. We do send a. It's, it's a snapshot close. It's not a real close. Friday nights are real close. But it's the same thing here. ADX, DI plus over DI minus, numbers start coming up. Price action off of 111.70, market comes up. And then you got this really strong move up after 1 p.m. You're real conservative. You look for a nice long, you hold on for the, this is a, again, this is a five minute intraday chart. You want to get in and get out, catching on, but check this out. You can get in and get out, but understand something. ADX numbers are above 40 here. That's huge. Oh, we have a drop here, but nothing's really moving ADX. It just, it's a, you know, it doesn't stop, it stops rising, but this is still a strong trending market up. Actually, it's a very strong trending market right up here, getting above 60. Never getting below 40 here. And you have a nice ride up. Very tight price action, look at 4 to 5 p.m. And then the market continues to climb. And it looks like the U.S. dollar bulls liked what Trump had to say last night. Again, these times are central times. Now here's a stock. Oh, wait, this doesn't work in stocks. Sure it does. Bank of America. I like banks. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm a, <laughs> Bank of America is one a very interesting bank. Actually, Bank of America, uh, Dave, we're going to get down there in a moment, I promise. Actually, from this morning and from yesterday on your, in your S&P. Um, <laughs> the Bank of America Corp, yeah, it's one of the big banks. Um, you got they're, they're, they're a swap dealer. They're one of your biggest swap dealers in the world next to Goldman Sachs, uh, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup. A Bank of America, if you haven't heard, back in 2015, was fined $18 billion for their actions that caused the financial crisis in 2008. $18 billion in 2015. Something must have been done illegally to get that kind of fine. And guess what? Nobody went to jail. Now, I grew up in the 80s in the industry working for a company that Mike Milken worked for. He went to prison. And there's a thousand Mike Milkins out there today. Not one is in prison. He was a very smart guy, by the way. They should never have put him in prison. They should have told him to work on fixing the problem. <laughs> the first problem that started that whole thing, think about this, guys. I don't know how old anyone is out there. The first problem that started all this was deregulating SNL, savings and loans, 1981. Deregulation, SNLs. Five years later, 1986, 1,400 SNLs collapsed. They took some very high-risk trades with people's money. So here, Bank of America, this is a daily chart. And yes, you can see there's gaps because, you know, stocks don't trade 24 hours a day. So you see this take place. Same thing. You got a little strong trend up here. Now think about if you're trading options with stocks. You can see what's happening here. The market's going up. Strong trading market up in Bank of America. The market's going to continue to climb, and you see what takes place. And you look at this. This is a strong trading market up, even in a stock. The stock's a strong trading market up, and what does it do? It lays down into a range after being a strong trend up. Does a strong trend continue up? Looks like it's doing that. It could have come down below 22 here, which is a range bottom. Range top could be put in at 2350, but like I said, I don't trade stocks. I invest in stocks. My pappy would be happy with my stock portfolio, I do believe. But here, again, strong uptrending market. Now, what's happening here with Bank of America? Well, you know, they, they like the term deregulation. Big banks love that word. Think about this. Big banks weren't trading corn, beans, and wheat before 1999. Big banks trade all grains today. If you want to know why that is, it's because something happened to a thing called Glass-Steagall. Glass-Steagall was pretty much put to rest in 1999 
with a, a pen. The signature by Bill Clinton put an end to Glass-Steagall. So that's Bank of America, a stock. And you could do this with any stock. I don't really, again, I don't day trade stocks. But even here on a daily chart, you could see strong trading market up, market comes up, strong trading market down. I like to see ADX numbers cross. I want you to hear this. ADX numbers, when they cross, and ADX numbers are above 40 and haven't dropped, it's a good sign you're heading from a strong trending market up to a strong trending market down or vice versa. Like I said, many times stocks or any kind of market will be in a long-term trend up and lay down into a range like I just showed you in Bank of America's daily chart. But when you see a market with ADX numbers climbing high and never getting to show a weak trend, what's happening is you see a strong trending market up become a strong trending market down quickly. Uh, Mike, Glass-Steagall was an a uh, federal and a uh, government uh, law that went into place in 1939. It's Glass-Steagall, S-T-E-A-G-E-L-L. -L. Glass-Steagall was an act put in place in 1933 to regulate banks. Remember what happened before 1933 with banks? So they were, they were not allowed to take high risk. They were, they were not allowed to, talk, to take high risk investments, basically, with other people's money, your money, my money in the bank. That ended in 1999. Um, <laughs> Louis, uh, Louis, I don't. Uh, I trade. I, I came off the floor of the board of trade. I like futures. I don't have. I don't have time to look at 18,000 stocks or how many stocks out there today. I like to look at a certain number of markets and know the markets. I know futures. I know futures like the back of my hand. I know the fundamentals of futures markets, whether it's cocoa or coffee or any other market out there. I've got the people in, in the connections in place that I know things about cocoa from the Ivory Coast many times a day or two earlier um, before other people know. I mean, it's just, it's just I, I'm tied to these markets. And again, I don't ignore fundamentals. I would highly recommend that if you're trading futures, never to, I mean, if you're trading just the E-mini S&P or something like that, you still got to know what's going on when the Fed speaks, um, any kind of things like that. You know, are we having a rate increase in March or not? We went through that a couple of years. But here, here's your e mini S&P. This is a daily chart, guys. Now, I said I, I day trade the e mini S&P. I like, I like to position trade the Dow. But here again, you could do the same thing. We have a red CST here, but then again, what happens? We know what takes place here. What caused the drop in the e mini S&P? This is cause and effect. Why, why did the market do what it did? Again, Hillary Clinton's not going to win. Why? She's being investigated again. Oh, wait, she's not being investigated. She's going to win. Oh, wait, she's not going to win. Oh, look at the break over 2160 here. Hmm. Long-term trade, possibly. A really long-term trade. Trent Trader did recommend a long on this green candle out here, and it's still holding this trade. Many people may have gotten out before the end of the year taking profits, which I don't recommend which I kind of highly recommend at the end of the year. Profit taking is kind of nice at the end of the year. But Trend Trader recommended a long out here on this green candle. You can see that at Trends and Futures. And I'll be happy to send you eight and a half years, eight and a half years of trade history regarding Trend Trader trades from the CRB. But here, it, it's still in this trade, guys. It's holding on. It's managing over $10,000 of open trade equity per one contract in this trade. And that's what it does. But here it wrote out a period of a weak, tr weak trending market in the E-mini S&P. What is that? This is what it looks like. And then you've got this pop. We talked about going long, again, above 2300 here if you got out and pocketed money back here. This is not an easy market to get back into for a longer haul because of what was going on here. And then Trump made that comment. What was the comment Trump made, everybody? Trump made that comment about what? His phenomenal tax plan. Boy, the market really liked that comment. And look at the market. Cause and effect. Now, in the E-mini S&P yesterday, you know, if you're, if you're bouncing around these markets, I mean, again, how many trades do you make in this 
oh, you know, you're, you're, you're looking, I guess, can, I look at candlesticks. You know, I think you've noticed that already. Candlesticks is something else I look at. But you got doji candles out here. Again, this is before 7 a.m. Um, when you look at this, you see what's taking place. You know, for me, there's a few trades here throughout the day, short-term trades, nothing like we saw back in here. This is a nice longer-term trade with some solid open trade equity. And you could day, you're day trading the EMS P. Now here, I'm going to show you what happened. I'm going to come back to the EMS P from this morning. But that's the EMS P from yesterday, only with ADX. Again, it's not the only thing I use for common sense trading on a daily chart. Now to come back to Earth <laughs> from the old days, here's the soybean market. And I'm not saying everyone has to trade soybeans, and if you don't trade futures. I could teach you how to trade any futures contract in any market. If you trade stocks and you want to just take a look at this, you want to visit, you know, I, I'll send you to places that are free education. You don't have to pay a lot of money for education today. The CME's got some incredible sites today for learning how to trade futures. You take advantage of that with trends and futures, and I'll teach you anything. I can teach you how to trade beans. You don't have to be a farmer to trade beans. You know, so you should know some things that I kind of share with everybody on a daily basis when you look at these markets. But here's a situation: you have a weak trending market bouncing off what we consider a range bottom of 960 here. And I've talked about, and I was talking about 960 for a while. But again, you're looking at beans. You're looking at a solid bean move up. You're not trading May 2017 beans in October. But you look what's taking place: very similar movement. Strong trending market up starts here. However, you saw a green CST out here. And that didn't really work out as well because you had a weakening trending market. The market was looking for a range. Finds that range bottom nice and comfortable at an even 10. A number I talked about a lot over the last few months in beans. <clears throat> a few months. It's actually been six months. <laughs> Can you imagine it's, it's two it's actually two months now into 2017. I don't know if it's me, but time goes a lot faster after I turn 50. Yeah, CME's got some incredible stuff, but for beginner traders, David, for in, in the markets today, beginner, <laughs> beginner traders, if you're new to futures, don't spend a dime on education until you go to the CME website and check out. I'll, if you want to, if you guys sign up for the 30-day trial, I'll show you how to do that in a moment. You can actually, I'll send you all those two, the two main websites that they have for uh, uh, education are amazing websites. I sent all, I've sent my whole, my kids in AP Economics in high school, I sent the whole class there. And I got some other classes in other high schools using that same website. <laughs> okay, George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Oh my God, it's crazy. And with the weather now, things are all out of whack. But here, again, this is soybeans. Catch some nice moves up, catch some nice moves down. I did a very well in beans yesterday. Now, just to go back, yesterday's bean move was incredible. We had a huge ride up in beans. Why? There was some talk about some biodiesel information coming out of the Trump White House. Biodiesel. That's incredible. So here we go, the daily chart, 7 a.m., I'm up at 6, looking at the price action. Wow, overnight at 8 p.m., the high was hit at 10.28. I got filled at 10.28.5 on a long that I rode up and got out and got back in. I didn't trade this market just twice, just two trades yesterday in beans. Did very well in beans yesterday. Actually, I made more money in beans than in any other market. When I trade beans, I don't just trade one contract. When I trade beans, I trade big. Only two trades, though. And I'm done for the day. Beans, I took some money out in beans. I took some money out in crude oil. I'm happy for the day. And that's beans now here. Today, this morning, what was happening? Eh, I missed a move up at 1 a.m. And this is the E-mini S&P 5-minute chart from today. I missed a room... <laughs> Why did I miss this move up? I don't trade 24 hours a day. I do need my sleep, especially now because I'm fighting this cold. But here, what's happening? I'm up again early. 
I still wake up early no matter what time I go to bed. If I go to bed at midnight, I'm up at 5. It's my clock in my head. Now, D, when I place a, a trade in here, okay, I, I usually look at, you know, I, I'll take a two, usually a two-point drop. I'll risk, you know, two points, three points, depending on price action more than anything else, how many contracts am I trading, how much am I risking. I look at that. But a two-point, you know, here, it, it, it taking a long about 23.75 up here, I'm looking at anything below 23.74, 23.73.50. I mean, that, that's, that's a two-point loss. Like, I could deal with that. So here, the move up this morning. Not a bad trade. A trade I, I like to make money early in the morning. When I make money early in the morning, it gives me the ability to kind of take a break afternoon if I want to. And I didn't miss that soybean trade late in the day yesterday. So I, that's all I look at. I don't look at many markets uh, throughout the day. So I want to ask all your question right now. And this is something that we know this is coming to an end. I know we have to come come to an end soon. Or we're coming out to an end. Um, Four thousand dollars. What is that? If you're managing open trade, I don't care. I don't care if you're day trading or whatever you're doing. If you're managing four thousand dollars of open trade equity, and any trade, one contract, two contracts, whatever, without looking at a chart, without looking at numbers, without looking at anything, how much you taking out of this trade? Does anyone have, you know, what are you taking out? Did you, Scott, did you say $400? That's $4,000. You're comfortable taking out $400 out of this trade? Or are you giving back $400? This is the whole idea of trading. Bring everything to dollars and cents, please. I want you to bring down something to dollars and cents. If you get out of a trade like this that you're managing $4,000 in, how do you know the market's not going to continue to go up? Where you can be managing five or six thousand dollars, you don't. So what are you doing here? Four thousand dollars of open trade equity. How do you get out of this trade? I said, bring everything to dollars and cents. Everything has to be in dollars and cents. Stop return on investment. Stop percentages. Stop everything. How much you want to take out of this trade? Look at everything in dollars and cents. I get tired of people talking about return on investment. A fifty percent move up. If you have a bet $100 and make 50%, you made $50. Okay, you're up 50%, but you made $50. Companies that go out there and they sell return on investment don't tell you their dollar values of how much they make. That's what you want to make sure you look at. How much you make, this is what pays the bills. In, percentages don't pay the bills. Um, Craig, we do have trading signals, and we teach a trading strategy at the site. You'll get, you could have, it doesn't cost anything to look at the site. Test drives don't cost anything, not even your credit card. But here, four thousand dollars. How many people would be comfortable taking out thirty-two hundred dollars in this trade? How many people would look at this and say, "I'll be happy with the twenty percent give back. I'll take out thirty-two hundred dollars out of this trade, and I'll go on to my next trade." Question mark. Here's a question for you. If you lose sleep over giving back $800 in this trade, call me. I'm going to give you my phone number. Call me. If you would lose sleep out of losing, not losing, you're just giving back $800. Remember, this is not yours. This is the markets. The $4,000 of open trade equity doesn't belong to you. It's not in your pocket. It's the market's money. So if you take out $3,200 out of this trade, the pocket that money, are you happy or not? If you lose sleep over giving back that $800, you need to call me. It's all about how much money you take out of the trade. You adjust your stops. We use Average True Range at the site, another one of Wells Wilder's creations. It's a great tool for helping you manage stops. HA, if you're trading, if you're trading options, you don't need that much money. You know, if you're trading straight out futures, I like to see people with ten thousand dollars in a trading account. You know, if you're trading forex, you don't need that much money either. Now, ten thousand dollars is not a bad number to start with. Um, if you know, if you really want to trade futures and really dig into futures, um, you know, twenty-five thousand dollars. Think about it as a, as a quarterback. If you want to start in your twenty-five yard line or your ten yard line, you know, again, if you take too many steps back in your ten yard line and they tackle you in your end zone, that's not good. 
But no, the whole idea is holding on to your money, managing your your winning trades, so you maximize how much you take out and put in your pocket. And of course, I teach how to minimize your your risk. You ha you have to minimize your risk in your trades also. But if you minimize your risk too much, think about it: Are you trading to win or are you trading not to lose? Whenever I get into a trade, I'm trading to win. Remember that first question I asked you early on? Yes, AJ, that would work. So here, what do we do? What do we do? We, we, <laughs> that's the Board of Trade. If anyone lives in Chicago or ever visits Chicago, the Board of Trade has been around since 1848. I'm a history buff. That's why I like the Old West. That building used to be the highest building in the Chicagoland area until the John Hancock was built. Um, but keep in mind, there's a real 30-day trial that trends in futures. What do I mean by that? There's no credit card needed. You'll get full access to everything. You get daily trade recommendations. You get all the charts and tools needed to trade successfully. I make sure of that. You get daily videos and educational videos from yours truly. I do members-only webinars. I try to do those every other week. Kind of like a common sense trading for the week ahead. You have access to something called the common sense trading or the CST daily advantage for futures and a daily advantage for Forex, along with a weekly common sense trading advantage. Those those tools are the heaviest used tools at Trends and Futures. Again, I don't like to look at 30 charts every night to find opportunities in a market. I look at that information to tell me what charts I need to look at for the highest probability trade setups. Now, how do you take advantage of a real 30-day free trial? I do believe you guys are going to get emails, like follow-up emails after this, this is done. But to get into it immediately, it's easy. Just send me an email. Send me an email at Gary at TrendsInFutures.com. Just provide me your first name, last name, and a telephone number. You don't need to give me your telephone number if you don't want. The only reason I ask for a telephone number is for someone to call you and set up a time for you and I to get on the phone individually. I offer one, one-on-one, -on -one, it's usually about 15 minutes, a trade consultation with me on the phone, not some other salesperson or something. You talk to me. I don't do this often throughout the week, maybe 20 times, 25 times a week. I do allow people for Saturday morning sometimes, um, not Sunday mornings, but Saturday mornings sometimes if need be. I work with your schedule if you want to do that. So you can provide me your first name, last name, and your telephone number if you wish. I'll get you, someone will set you up on a 30-day free trial. And once you send your email, you'll receive a username and password to log into the site and start seeing how it can help you make money. Again, it's not for stock traders. I don't trade stocks, I'm sorry. You'll receive two free eBooks. Where is the trend, which covers ADX and common sense trading a lot deeper. You also get What Lies Beneath All Trends, a book that everybody should read if you really want to know, hear this, the sails of the sailboat. You've got the wind. What Lies Beneath All Trends will tell you what the sails are. Without those sails, markets don't move at all. That's all about What Lies Beneath All Trends. And everyone tells me when they read that book, it's an eye-opener. It talks about Glass-Steagall and all the different things you need to know about how big money is moving in the markets today, all futures markets and currencies. You'll also receive eight, um, eight and a half years. Uh, you'll receive eight and a half years, not just eight. It's eight and a half years now of trade history. So if you email me at Gary at TrendsInFutures.com, it's that easy. Again, if you want to just give me your first name, last name, I'll have your email address in your, you know, I need your email address. It should be on the email you send me. But go ahead, send me an email. Or if you want to call me, <laughs> I'm a real person. That's me. God, I, I have more gray hair now since this picture. But 312-506-8706 is my direct line. I'm happy to talk to people. Send me the email, Gary at and I'll get you set up. And I think we're coming to an end. I think it's, is it 12 noon central time now? Um, I want to thank everybody for joining me. If you have any questions, if you want to ask me questions uh, to continue this conversation, send me questions again to Gary at TrendsInFutures.com. I'll answer your questions. If you have a question you want to answer it immediately, call me at 312-506-8706. And you are going to receive an email, I do believe, uh, a sales pieces that come out. But if you want to get in immediately and start working on it today, get you in for the weekend, 
get you prepared for the next members only webinar, feel free to do that. After the free trial, trends and futures cost, and nothing else is going to be tried to sell. We're not going to try to sell you anything else. It's $69 a month. You can pay for the year, $679 a year, or just $69 a month. And again, no one's going to call you to try to sell you other services or add-ons or up, you know, we're going to up this or up that. I don't believe in that. So if you have any other questions, feel free to call me. And again, I want to thank everyone for joining me today. I want to thank everybody at Winvesting 